the book of Jeremiah. We come today to Jeremiah chapter 48. And this is a long chapter. It is also our 25th study in the book of Jeremiah. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. This chapter concerns judgment on Moab. The previous chapter dealt with just judgment, God's judgment on Philistia. Uh, the chapter before that talked about judgment on Egypt. And so on we go. And it says in verse 1, Against Moab, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Woe to Nebo, for it is plundered, Kirjathim is shamed and taken. The high stronghold is shamed and dismayed. And the prophecy of Moab's destruction, which begins here, was fulfilled in 582 B.C., just a few short years after Jerusalem fell because of her sin. Verse 2, no more praise of Moab. In Heshbon, they have devised evil against her. Come and let us cut her off as a nation. You also shall be cut down, O madman. The sword shall pursue you. Madman here refers to a city in Moab. No one in that nation will be doing any boasting anymore. And that is one of the sins that they were guilty of. Something that God takes very seriously. Verse 3, a voice of crying shall be from Horonaim, plundering and great destruction. Horonaim was a city east of the Dead Sea. It fell into ruin like the rest of the country. And it says in verse 4, Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. And so the citizens of Moab are going to cry out in their distress once God's wrath hits. Verse 5, For in the ascent of Luhith they ascend with continual weeping. The people cry as they run away trying to save what's left of their lives. Their lives will be changed forever, and if they're fortunate, they will escape with their lives. In verse 6 it says, Flee, save your lives, and be like the juniper in the wilderness, for because you have trusted in your works and your treasures, you also shall be taken, and Chemosh shall go forth into captivity, his priests and his princes together. Moab trusted in their wealth for security instead of living for God and trusting in him. They also trusted in their false god, Chemosh, and now they will suffer for the foolish choices they made. Verse 8, <clears throat> And the plunderer shall come against every city. No one shall escape. The valley also shall perish. And the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord has spoken. And the destroyer refers to the king of Babylon, who would be Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 9. Give wings to Moab, that she may flee and get away. For her cities shall be desolate, without any to dwell in them. Uh, invaders uh, would sometimes put salt invaders would sometimes put salt on farmlands so that it would not grow crops and actually that's what verse 9 is talking about her cities will be desolate without any to uh, dwell in them and some translations describe putting salt on the farmlands to destroy them 
to make the land totally useless, which would make it desolate. Verse 10, Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. The destruction of sinful Moab is ordained by God. As a result, those who he tells to do the destroying, well, they better do it, or they are the ones who are going to be in trouble with God. They will be cursed. Verse 11, Moab has been at ease from his youth. He has settled on his dregs and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into captivity. Therefore, his taste remained in him, and his scent has not changed. Well, because Moab had not experienced the wrath of God for her sins, up until this point anyway, she felt pretty brash about doing evil. 12. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I shall send him wine workers who will tip him over and empty his vessels and break the bottles. Well, in other words, just because God has not yet punished doesn't mean he will never punish. That's the lesson here. 13. Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. And remember, Israel, the northern kingdom, after they seceded from the south, they actually set up idolatry, some golden calves in Bethel, and they worshipped those golden calves in place of God, and, and ultimately it led to their downfall. And God is saying here that Moab will be destroyed and they will be ashamed of their favorite so-called God on the day that they are destroyed. Their God, Chemosh, will prove to be too weak to help them, just as the golden idols of Israel were too weak to help them. They should have trusted in God. And it continues in verse 14, How can you say, We are mighty? and strong men for the war. Well, they won't be able to. Moab will no longer brag about their courage and their strength. They won't brag because they will all be afraid. Verse 15. Moab is plundered and gone up from her cities. Her chosen young men have gone down to the slaughter, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. God is the Lord of hosts. He is the supreme ruler of the world and therefore the nations which will not bow to him will fall as Moab will fall verse 16 the calamity of Moab is near at hand and his affliction comes quickly God is in control God decides all things therefore God confidently declares that Moab will soon be destroyed Moab will soon be destroyed. The calamity of Moab is near at hand, says God. And he's the one who says it with confidence because he's the one that can make it happen. Verse 17, Bemoan him, all you who are around him, and all you who know his name. Say how the strong staff is broken, the beautiful rod and the breaking of Moab's staff refers to the complete overthrow of her rule. Verse 18, O daughter, inhabiting Dibon, come down from your glory and sit in thirst, for the plunderer of Moab has come against you. He has destroyed your strongholds. And the proud forts are the things that are in view here. In verse 18, the proud forts which Moab trusted in will be leveled, and they will be they will be found to uh, to have been a very poor substitute for trusting in God. Verse 18, verse 19. O oh, inhabitants, inhabitant of Aror, stand by the way and watch. Ask him who flees and her who escapes. Say, what has happened? In other words, God says, watch for the Moabites who are running away to save their lives. Watch them as they 
run speedily past you and ask, hey, what's your hurry? What's your hurry? Why are you running away? Well, their answer is found in verse 20. Moab is shamed, for he is broken down. Wail and cry. Tell it in Arnon that Moab is plundered. News of Moab's destruction is going to be carried to faraway places by those who flee from that country. Verse 21. And, on judgment, and judgment has come on the plain country, on Holan and Jaheza and Mephahath, on Dibon and Nebo, on Beth, Diblathium, on Kirjathium, and Beth Gamul, and Beth Maon, on Kirioth, and Basra, on all the cities of the land of Moab, far or near. And, you know, the destruction is seen in more, more of a personal way in these four verses as God mentions specific cities that will be destroyed. This is not just some abstract idea. This was real destruction that affected real cities and real people in those cities. Verse 25. The horn of Moab is cut off and his arm is broken, says the Lord. Moab's pride will cause her to lose her great power and her position. Her arm will be broken. And she was a prideful country, sinfully pride sinfully prideful verse 26 make him drink for he magnified himself against the Lord Moab shall wallow in his vomit and he shall also be in derision Moab smarted off to God so God will show her who's boss and will humble Moab in the most degrading way verse 27 for was not Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves? For whenever you speak of him, you shake your head in scorn. Moab used to mock Israel just a few years earlier as, as Israel was suffering for her sins. Well, the thing is, Moab and other nations around Israel hastened the destruction of Israel by promoting their sinfulness in her. They exported their ungodliness to Israel and, and then they laughed at Israel as Israel suffered for her sins. Verse 28 You who dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock and be like the dove which makes her nest in the sides of the cave's mouth. God says you Moabites, you might as well run for the hills and Hide in caves because your cities sure will not protect you. Verse 29. We have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceedingly proud of his loftiness and arrogance and pride and of the haughtiness of his heart. God uses several synonyms here to emphasize his hatred of Moab's ways. Her sins were despicable to him. In verse 30. I know his wrath, says the Lord, but it is not right. His lies have made nothing right. God says, Moab has been arrogant toward my people. I know all about it. Verse 31. Therefore, I will wail for Moab, and I will cry out for all Moab. I will mourn for the men of Ker Hires. Amazing. Jeremiah will cry because of the destruction of Moab. You know, Jeremiah was a godly man, and so Jeremiah, like God, takes no pleasure in seeing the wicked punished. 32. O vine of Sibma, I will weep for you with the weeping of Jazer. Your plants have gone over the sea. They reach to the sea of Jazer. The plunderer has fallen on your summer fruit, and your vintage. Joy and gladness are taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. I have caused wine to fail from the wine presses. No one treads with no one's no one tre will tread 
with joyous shouting, not joyous shouting. Sipna was a border city in Moab. It was the first to be destroyed. It was a sign of things to come. Let's read the rest of this chapter, beginning in verse 34, from the cry of Heshbon to Eliath and to Jahaz. They have uttered their voice from Zoar to Horonaim like a three-year-old heifer, for the waters of Nimrim also shall be desolate. Moreover, says the Lord, I will cause to cease in Moab the one who offers sacrifices in the high places and burns incense to his gods. So God will get rid of idolatry in Moab just as he got rid of it among his people in Israel and Judah because it just doesn't matter where it is practices. Where it is practiced, it is still sinful. God hates idolatry in the United States of America today. It's just as much a sin today as it was back in the days of Moab. 36. Therefore my heart shall wail like flutes for Moab, and like flutes my heart shall wail for the men of Kir Heres. Therefore the riches they have acquired have perished. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And he is seen crying even as he pours out his righteous wrath. 37. For every head shall be bald, and every beard clipped. On all the hands shall be cuts, and on the loins sackcloth. And all these things were a sign of, of uh, extreme suffering and, and extreme mourning. 38. A general lamentation on all the housetops of Moab and on its streets. For I have broken Moab like a vessel in which is no pleasure, says the Lord. I have turned Moab into something that really isn't, isn't worth looking at anymore is what God is saying. This once beautiful place is, is made ugly by their sin. Verse 39. They shall wail how she has broken down, how Moab has turned her back with shame. So Moab shall be a derision and a dismay to all those about her. For thus says the Lord, Behold, one shall fly like an eagle and spread his wings over Moab, referring to Babylon. Kiriath is taken, and the strongholds are surprised. The mighty men's hearts in Moab on that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. Terror. Terror will strike the people. Severe pain. Intense pain. 42. And Moab shall be destroyed as a people, because he has magnified himself against the Lord, thought he was better than God, thought he didn't have to submit to the Lord. He will submit to the Lord. People will submit to the Lord. They will either do it voluntarily, or they will do it by force. This is God's creation. And he will receive honor from his creation. <clears throat> and we continue. 43. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon you, O inhabitants of Moab, says the Lord. He who flees from the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who gets out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For upon Moab, upon it, I will bring the year of their punishment, says the Lord. The year of their punishment is etched in stone. And there will be no escape. Some may escape from one source of trouble. But in their escaping, they will run into another source. Verse 45. Those who fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of exhaustion. But a fire shall come out of Heshbon, a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the brow of Moab, the crown of the head of the sons of Tumult. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Chemosh perish, for your sons have been taken captive, and your daughters captive. Those 
people who trusted in the god so-called Chemosh will perish. You know, that never happens to those who trust in the Lord God. Oh, the ungodly may take their lives, but no one can take their souls. But those who trusted in Chemosh or those who look to some other idol or some other thing for security and have great devotion to something other than God will find that not only will they perish physically, they will perish spiritually as well. 47. Yet I will bring back the captives of Moab in the latter days, says the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. And so God interjects a bit of hope here for the people who lived in the territory which was known as Moab. And of course the gospel of Jesus Christ go out to, goes out to all people everywhere in the entire world, including that area that once was Moab. And they too can have salvation today if they turn to Christ. Well, we'll pick it up in chapter 49 next time. Until then, so long everyone.